What's up YouTube? This is John Helm with Helmwood Shop and Smithy back with another knife making video. Today is Blacksmithing 101. How to make a knife with tools you probably already have. When I made my first knife, which was about four years ago now, I did not have the moderately well set up shop that you see in my videos. In fact, my garage was mostly a gym. So tucked off into the corner, I had an old kitchen cabinet with a piece of plywood on top of it that I used as a workbench. And I had the tools that you would expect any kind of sort of handy dad to have. So, you know, I had some files, some clamps, a drill, a couple hand saws, hammer, what have you. But even though I didn't have all the cool tools that I have now, I was still able to make a knife. And I was able to make it just with the tools that I could fit in that one kitchen cabinet that I used as a workbench. And if you are a kind of handy dude like I was at that point, you probably already own all of them. And here they are. Every tool that you need to make your first knife. Many of these are the same tools that I used when I made my first knife. The first tool you're going to use is a clamp. I would recommend having a big heavy C-clamp like these, which you can pick up at any automotive store or at Harbor Freight. But you could also get away with using some carpenter's clamps like these, or even some little baby C-clamps like these that I got at the dollar store. However, it is definitely in your best interest to have a variety of clamps at your disposal. I like to have some of these little alligator clamps for clamping on scales, and you'll probably want to use a large C-clamp like this for holding your workpiece to the bench. For cutting your steel, you're going to need a hacksaw with a bimetal blade. You can also use your hacksaw for cutting your scale material, but it's really not ideal. For cutting your handle material, I would definitely recommend getting a pull saw like this one. These can get pretty pricey, but I got this one at Harbor Freight for about 10 bucks, and it works great. Best part about it is, once it gets dull, I can just throw it away and buy a new one. But for cutting contours in your handle scales, I would recommend using a coping saw like this one. Or, if you have it, you can also use a jigsaw. Once you have cut your material, you'll need to refine the profile using some files or rasps. You will eventually want to acquire as many different sizes and shapes of files as you can, but in order to make your first knife, you will only need this one file. This is a half round file. It has a convex edge for filing concave profiles and a flat edge for filing flat or convex profiles. I'd also like to give this guy an honorable mention. This is a Shinto rasp. If you don't have one, you're probably going to want to get one. It's one of the handiest tools for shaping handle material. You'll also need a hammer and a center punch for center punching your pinholes before you drill. A drill and a set of drill bits for drilling your pinholes. A heat source for heating your metal prior to the quench. However, you can just build a fire in your backyard and blow on it with a leaf blower or a shop vac, even a hair dryer. You'll also need a quenching medium. I would recommend using canola oil for your first build and a fireproof container to keep the oil in while you quench your blade. You can get a one gallon metal paint bucket from Home Depot for about $5 or you could also use a disposable turkey roasting pan. And you'll also need some sandpaper after the blade is quenched for finishing. You will need various grits of sandpaper. I recommend having 80, 120, and 220 on hand at a very minimum. In my opinion, 400 grit is when the blade starts to look nice. You're also going to need a nice, sturdy work surface from which to work off of. If you are single or looking to become single, you can use your dining room table. Otherwise, you'll need to have some sort of workbench. And that brings us to materials. Most importantly, you'll need a piece of flat, high carbon steel from the mill, like this piece of 1095. Since we're making a stock removal knife, it's very important that the piece of steel you have is perfectly flat. This means that railroad springs, cable, leaf springs, huge truck axles, these are all a no-go for your first knife. And since the steel must be hardenable, it means that grabbing a random piece of welding stock from your local hardware store also won't cut it. That means you will need to buy this steel from a steel supplier. Don't try to get away with scrap if you're making a stock removal knife. I get my steel from New Jersey Steel Baron or sometimes on Amazon, which is where I got this piece of 1095 plate. For your first knife, I would recommend using 1080, 01 tool steel, or 5160. I will leave a link to New Jersey Steel Baron in the description. You will also need some handle scales. There are a myriad of different types of handle scales that you can buy online or make at home. But for your first knife, I would really recommend you stick with just a couple decent looking pieces of hardwood. 
maple, oak, poplar, all the stuff that you can get in a fancy wood section in your Home Depot will work just fine for some handle scales. You'll also need some two-part epoxy glue for gluing on your handle material. I recommend not using five-minute epoxy. It doesn't give you enough time to finish your glue up and get everything nice and clean before it hardens. 30-minute epoxy is good. You can also use 24-hour epoxy. You'll need some lacquer thinner to clean up the epoxy and some sort of product to finish your handle scales. I like boiled linseed oil. You could also use Danish oil, tongue oil, lacquer, polyurethane. There are a bunch of different options. And you'll need some pin material for holding on your scales. It really isn't that important what type of pin material you use, and there are several available. My favorites to work with, especially with hand tools, are brass or aluminum tubing because they're easy to file and they don't get too hot and burn the surrounding wood. And now, I will make a knife using only these very basic tools. Before I can go out in the garage and start cutting metal, I need to design this knife. I have here three example pieces, two of which I made, one of which was a gift from my boss. All of these blade profiles and sizes are pretty appropriate for making a knife with the simple tools that we have at hand. What you don't want to do on your first build is make a huge knife or a knife with lots of complicated designs or a really wacky profile to it. You want to keep things fairly straightforward. So, I might have lied to you a little bit. I said I was only going to use the tools pictured before, but I am going to use my vise. Simply because my workbench has so many tools that are fixed to it, I don't really have a good spot to clamp something down without banging elbows into things all the time. And since my bench is pushed up against the wall and my vise swivels, it'll make it a lot easier for me to get good shots with the camera. into some issues cutting this out because I used a piece of plate rather than bar stock. I would definitely recommend if you're using a hacksaw, don't use a big plate. <laughs> use a piece of bar stock. That way you can get at the blade from all different sides so it's a lot easier to address a drifting cut and also you don't get bottomed out by the top of the saw. I was actually unable to reach the middle and in an attempt to cut it down shorter so that I could, I rattled it until it snapped off. Also, I had a hard edge. This factory edge was super, super hard. I had a hard time getting through it with even the velour bay file, but I stuck with it, eventually got through and was able to cut it the rest of the way with the hacksaw. 
This particular Stanley hacksaw, uh, it always drifts to the left. Even if you compensate your grip by turning your hand, it's still going to drift to the left. And that made it really hard to follow along the edge of the pattern. So I had a cut that drifted and I had to just go with it and take out a chunk of the profile, but that's okay. We have plenty of meat on this side. So I'm just going to put the template on here and retrace. So I got the blade cut out relatively close to the pattern. I did run into some more issues from this hardened steel edge here on the back. Uh, keep in mind, I did not buy this steel from New Jersey Steel Baron. I got this from Amazon and it was cheap and you get what you pay for. I've never had that issue with metal I got from New Jersey Steel Baron. It's a good sight. You do want to remove as much material as possible with your hacksaw to avoid having to file for hours and hours getting your profile to shape. I'm pretty close here, but there's some spots, especially up around the tip, where I think I could cut a lot closer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I start filing. I got one half of the blade profile down. It's looking very nice. As you can see, the handle to my file is soaked in sweat. I was able to get through that hard steel on the back by scraping it all off with a hacksaw. I didn't want to use my files because it was flattening out the teeth and uh, it just ruined your files. Yeah, still a little bit of it on there. Before you can file on the profile ear knife, you need to mark off the center line of your blade edge. This blade is 3 16 inch thick, so I just color in the edge with a sharpie, and then I use a 3 16 inch drill bit to scrub a line right down the center.
I have a bevel roughed in on one half of the blade. I'm going to clean up the flats a little bit. You can see there's some errant scratch marks there where I misfiled. And then I'm going to draw file to make sure my bevel is perfectly flat. <laughs> little side note, I ran over to Harbor Freight to get some new files. But what I didn't know is that these files have a lifetime warranty on them. You can go in if they're worn out or broken or the teeth are just dull and swap them out for free. You don't even need a receipt. So that's pretty cool. Now that the flats are nice and smooth, I can start to flatten out this bevel. I overshot just a tad here. So now I'm gonna true all this up, try to blend in that transition there, and then I'll probably go over the flats with a smoother tooth file real fast, just to make sure that my grind line is nice and even. As I get closer to the final shape, Notice that I'm filing much more slowly and carefully, and I'm checking much more frequently, pretty much in between every single file stroke to make sure that everything is exactly how I want it. The less we have to do with sandpaper, the better. When you're cleaning up around the Ricasso, it's a good idea to take your file and flip it around backwards and draw it towards you rather than pushing it into the Ricasso. The reason is if I have it straight and I'm pushing into my cut and I overshoot, I'm going to dig the corner of this file right into the Ricasso. If I draw it towards me this way and I overshoot, I'll hit it. I might leave a mark on it, but at least I'm not pushing in the direction in which the teeth cut. So the mark will be much smaller and it'll be much easier to clean up later. The Ricasso is decently cleaned up. I just about faded in that transition. However, I still have a little bit of stock removal to do on this side. I thought that I was gonna have to remove more meat than I did in order to blend this in. I also have a couple low spots right there, right there, and right here is a bit of a high spot. So I'm just gonna take some time. I'm gonna go nice and slow. I'm not gonna push too hard on the file because that's how you wind up with high and low spots. And I'm just going to take nice, easy, smooth passes and try to blend everything in, make sure that my edge is symmetrical all the way from the base to the tip, and also that my plunge line and my grind lines are nice and smooth.
Floyd and Dicom will help you identify high and low spots as you draw file. If you don't have any Dicom, you can just use a Sharpie. I got the distal taper established here. I had a weird drop off at the tip and I'm assuming it's because I was filing from the front the whole time. So as I came around, I could curve off the edge. I had to bring down the meat here quite a bit. So now I'm back to establishing flats. When you're flattening this out, try to make sure that your file marks stay in the middle. When you go back and forth, you're going to rock. So either edge is inevitably going to get lower than the center. So just try to leave the edges red and get this whole center silver and then maintain that angle until it's silver the whole way through. So after draw filing, I was having a really hard time getting my grind line even and the thickness on the edge even. So what I wound up doing is just filing on the edge itself, angling my, my file so that I'm just hitting that edge until I get it just about where I want it. Which this means that my bevel is not going to be flat. It's not going to be a straight line from here to here. It's going to be a bow like this. And so once I get these edges all trued up, I'll slowly bring the file closer into the middle and then I'll draw file it straight down until the whole thing is flat. And I think that that's going to work best. I brought the profile on the edge and the grind line here back to just about where I need them to be. So the next step is flatten out this bevel. It is all filed down and looking nice. The second side of the bevel went much better than the first. It also went much faster. I had to go back and throw up a couple of things here and there, a little bit around the profile, a little bit on the plunge lines, make sure they're nice and even, but we are ready to drill holes. It's been a long day. It took pretty much the whole day to do this and I didn't really spend a lot of time on the recording. It was pretty much all just me pushing a file, which I'm sure you noticed. <laughs> but I have the holes drilled, chamfered, everything is squared up, everything is symmetrical and true. The second half, um, when I was beveling, it actually went very quickly. It just took a little bit of know-how and of course experience. A stock removal knife with a grinder, I would have been here in maybe an hour and a half if I was just hanging out taking my time. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go inside, I'm going to put a 120 grit finish on this, and we'll be back tomorrow where we will heat treat, temper, 
hand sand and put a handle on. As always, if you like what you saw today, you have good ideas for future projects, or you just want to tell me that I'm ugly, drop it in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. Y'all have a good one.